Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome back to Favourites Week and today I'm going to be telling you about my favourite 20 classics. So today I'm going to be telling you about 20 of my favourite classic books. Obviously the definition of a classic is one that is fairly disputed, um, but the main thing that the books I'm talking about today have in common is that they were all published or written before 1914, and of course that I love them all a lot. I'm going to try and go through these books fairly quickly because we have a lot to cover, so without any further ado let me tell you about my 20 favourite classics. At number 20 we have The Half Sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury. This is a wonderful Victorian novel which looks at gender and class in a fascinating way. We follow two half-sisters, Bianca and Alice. Um, Alice is born into a respectable middle-class household and Bianca um, comes from a much less respectable working class background um, and ends up becoming a actress. I love The Half Sisters so much. I think it is such a wonderful, interesting, fascinating read. I love Bianca as a character. I love the way that this book explores her profession as an actress. I love the way this book looks at gender and class and the kind of limited roles open to women in the Victorian period. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful read that I love a lot. I've read it twice um, and I'm sure I will read it again in the future as well. At number 19 we have Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. This is another Victorian novel, as many books on this list are, and this is my favourite Thomas Hardy novel, though I love Thomas Hardy's works a lot. This is a truly fantastic novel, although I am very willing to admit that it is not for everyone and it is a little bit depressing in places. This book follows Jude, who is um, a young man from a working class background who is really keen to go to university. He loves learning um, and he is kind of determined that if he studies he will find the right way to be able to go to university University, but various things in his life kind of prevent that from happening and the book is about him and his kind of quest for learning as well as his relationship with a woman called Sue. The way this book looks at love and marriage and class and education in the Victorian period is fascinating. I love it so much for all its themes and for the fantastic glimpses of happiness and powerful moments that you get in amidst all the despair that this book is full of. I just think it is such a wonderful read. At number 18 I have The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. This is a nice century French novel and one that I really really love. I read it for the first time last year and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is a massively long book but it is so worth every word because it is so rich and wonderful. It tells the story of a young man called Edmond Dante who at the beginning of the book is accused of something he didn't do and sent away to prison and the book follows his kind of quest for revenge on the people who put him away in prison and everything goes on from there. It is fantastic, so rich, so clever. I love the way it looks at kind of morality and revenge. It is incredibly intricate and detailed with so many subplots, so many minor characters um, and so many tangents but it is also a thoroughly thoroughly wonderful read that I absolutely loved. I listened to it on audiobook. The audiobook is 50 hours long but I still absolutely loved it. At number 17 we have The Odd Women by George Gissing. This is a wonderful wonderful late Victorian novel that I love hugely. It follows various single middle class women in late Victorian society who are trying to make a career for themselves. They're trying to build a life for themselves that does not include marriage and children which is the kind of typical path expected for a Victorian woman. The title The Odd Odd women refers not to like strange women but to odd women as in women left not in a pair. This is a book looking at unmarried women in late Victorian society and the options that are open to them and the new options that perhaps would be open to them if society could change a little bit. It is a wonderfully proto-feminist novel with fantastic characters, wonderful plotting and just so many things that I absolutely love. Cannot recommend it enough. At number 16 we have Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is the only book on this list I don't have a physical copy of and it's also the book of, on this list that I have read the longest ago. I've only read Les Miserables once when I was 15 but it made a huge impact on me and I still love it and think about it today. I think it is such a fantastic, wonderfully moving book that also balances kind of emotion and humour in a really fantastic way. Anyone who is familiar with the story of Les Miserables from the stage show may be surprised to hear that the book is actually really funny but Victor Hugo writes comedy and tragedy so well and Les Miserables has the perfect balance of kind of emotion and fun which I love. Les Miserables follows um, the characters surrounding one man called Jean Valjean who um, is released from prison after 20 years um, and tries to kind of get his life back on track 
and we're following life in early 19th century France, looking at class and poverty, looking at politics and rebellion, and it is just such a wonderful book. It is absolutely huge and full of tangents. One of the reasons why I haven't reread it is because it is so long, um, and you know, every time Victor Hugo introduces a minor character, you get about 10 chapters about their backstory, but I still absolutely adore it. Like, there are lines of it which I could still, like, recite off by heart when I haven't read it for 13 years because I just think it's such a wonderful, wonderful read and just absolutely beautifully written. At number 15 we have Valette by Charlotte Bronte. This is another Victorian classic and one that I love. It tells the story of a young woman called Lucy Snow who travels from England to Belgium in order to become a teacher there and we follow her life there and um, her struggles with loneliness and unrequited love and her ultimately finding a bit of a place for herself in the world and people who are more similar to her. I think it is a wonderful novel, a really interesting psychological portrait of one character that examines loneliness and depression and unrequited love in a really powerful, powerful way. I also love the characters in this. I think there are so many fantastically drawn characters. Valette is an interesting one where I always used to say that I loved it more than Jane Eyre, which you may see further on in this video, um, but actually having reread both Valette and Jane Eyre in the last year, I think it's safe to say that I do love Jane Eyre more, um, but I also hugely love Valette too. I think it is such a wonderful, wonderful novel. It's a more ambitious novel than Jane Eyre in some ways um, and I do think it is kind of a real masterpiece of Charlotte Bronte's writing. It's such a fantastic book, I really do recommend it and especially if you have read Jane Eyre and you don't love the ending then I think you might find Valette really interesting too. At number 14 I have Bleak House by Charles Dickens. This is a wonderful, fantastic novel um, which tells the story of various, various characters all surrounding this suit in chancery, so this legal suit about disputed wills, and we're following everyone who is affected by this will and who may or may not inherit when the lawyers finally decide what this will really says. There are so many things I love about Bleak House, I think it has wonderful characters and a fantastic plot. It also has a really interesting unique and innovative narrative structure where half of it is in first person past tense told from one character's perspective and the other half is in third person present tense um, and the chapters that are in third person present tense I think is some of like Dickens most brilliant but also most interesting writing and um, where he's really doing something different with narrative style in this wonderfully innovative way. Dickens is my favourite Victorian author, my favourite author of all time and I love Bleak House very very much and this is of course by no means the only Dickens book that that would appear in this video. At number 13 we have another wonderful Victorian novel. This is Olive by Dinah Mullet Crake. This is a novel about a young girl um, who is born with a deformity in her spine that means she doesn't look like the other girls and women around her and she's told from a young age that she'll probably never get married and have children as Victorian women are expected to do and so she decides to do something different with her life. She becomes an artist. We follow her growing up, we follow her friendships, um, her endeavours to become an artist, her relationship with her family um, and later her falling in love as well. It's such a wonderful, beautiful coming of age story. I think if you like Jane Eyre, you'll like Olive because it looks at a lot of the same themes in a slightly different way. And I just hugely, hugely love Olive. It's a book about kind of demanding happiness and a right to respect from the world in a wonderful way. And I just absolutely adore it. At number 12, we have The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope, another Victorian novel and one that I love a lot. This book is a book that is all about money. It kind of centers on the Melmot family, this new family who appear in Victorian London society who have all this money um, and no one really knows how they've made this money. They don't have much kind of class or respectability, but they have such a grand fortune and such a massive house that everyone flocks to them. And we're kind of following all the characters who are circling the Melmots. And it's a book about money and class and respectability and the kind of um, gulf between money and class. It's such a fantastic novel which looks at so many interesting themes with so many different characters and so many plots interweaving together and I just absolutely love it. It is a real Victorian masterpiece and one that I highly recommend. At number 11 we have Maurice by Ian Forster. This novel was written between 1913 and 1914, although it wasn't actually published until after Ian Forster's death in 1970, mostly because this book is about homosexuality and about what it meant to be a gay man in late Victorian and Edwardian society. Maurice follows the character of Maurice from his kind of boyhood into his adulthood as he discovers that he is attracted to men um, and how he feels knowing that he lives in this society that will never accept him and will never accept his relationships. It's about Maurice growing up and falling in love and coming to understand himself better and it is 
truly, truly brilliant and fantastic and so moving and emotionally charged and I just absolutely adore it. The ending is fantastic and it is such an incredible read and I highly, highly recommend it. It's definitely my favourite book by Ian Forster. At number 10 we have another Victorian book, another Dickens book and that is Little Dorrit. This is a wonderful novel that I love a lot and we're chiefly following the character of Amy Dorrit who was born in the Marshalsea prison for debt where her father was incarcerated and when we meet her in Little Dorrit she is 22 years old trying to kind of sustain her family and help them all um, and we follow her friendship with a man called Arthur Clennam who she meets at the beginning of the book and kind of everything goes on from there. We're following Amy and her family, Arthur Clennam and his as well as a huge cast of characters as you always get in Dickens books. I love this novel so much for so many reasons. Amy Dorrit is one of my favourite of Dickens' heroines. Um, I love Arthur Clennam a lot and there are so many wonderful, wonderful minor characters in here with so many fantastic chapters um, and fantastic, wonderful moments and the plot arc and the kind of narrative shifts in the book are so good. I love how this book looks at class and respectability and money in a really fantastic way. Um, I think it's a really interesting one to like compare to um, the way we live now because they both kind of talk about money and London society and finance in a really interesting way. There's so much I love about Little Dorrit. It's one of Dickens's best works in my opinion and I just love it so much. Then at number nine we have Mansfield Park by Jane Austen which is another book I love massively. This is a novel from the Regency period and it follows a young girl called Fanny Price who um, at an early age is sent from her relatively low middle class family to live with her wealthy titled relations in a place called Mansfield Park. She lives with her wealthier aunt, uncle and cousins but they never quite treat her as one of the family although she does form a close bond with her cousin Edmund. It is a coming of age story in many ways and I often like to think of Mansfield Park as a coming of age story and a kind of comedy of manners much more than a love story. There is a love story element in Mansfield Park as there is in so many Jane Austen novels but really it's a novel about Fanny Price as a character kind of coming to understand herself more. Um, Fanny Price is a very very quiet kind of meek timid person in some ways but she also has great kind of inner and moral strength in a way that I love and all the minor characters in this book and um, the Crawfords, Mrs Norris, like there are so many wonderful wonderful characters in this book. I love it very very much and I highly highly recommend it. At number eight we have another Anthony Trollope book and that is The Small House at Allington. This is the fifth book in Anthony Trollope's Barsetcher Chronicle so I don't recommend reading it necessarily unless you've read the first four books in the series but I absolutely absolutely love this book. It is my favourite Anthony Trollope book and one of my favourite books of all time and has one of my favourite like endings of all time I suppose um, in a way. One of my favourite plot arcs of all time maybe I should say. The Small House at Allington follows two sisters Belle and Lily Dale who are quite different. Belle is much more reserved and Lily kind of wears her heart on her sleeve more and it follows these sisters and their romantic relationships and the various men in their life. There are so many things I love about The Small House at Allington. I love Lily as a character and I love her character arc. I love Johnny Eames who is one of the kind of heroes of the book um, who is just one of my absolute favourite characters doesn't all of literature. I think he is so well done and so fantastic. I love the way this book looks at family and familial relationships. I love the way this book really explores people's psychology and why people might do things that you really know they shouldn't do. Like I feel like every character in The Small House at Allington is so fully fledged and I just I just absolutely love the ending so much. It's such such a wonderful book and I just yeah I just love it so much. We're really getting on to the forever favourites now. At number seven I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read this book when I was 13 and it's the book that got me into Victorian literature. I read Jane Eyre and completely fell in love with it and after I finished it I tried to read as much Victorian literature as possible. I just love Jane Eyre so much. There is something about her as a character and her kind of coming of age story that is so so powerful and so fantastic and so rich and wonderful and so readable and accessible as well. Like I feel like Jane Eyre is such a great place to start with Victorian literature. If you don't know, Jane Eyre tells the story of a young girl who is um, kind of brought up by wealthy relations who don't want her and um, she ends up going away to boarding school and later becoming a governess and a lot of the narrative revolves around what happens in her first placement as a governess working at a place called Thornfield Hall where the master is sort of charming in an unusual way um, and weird things are happening and it is fantastic. I love how it is gothic and a little bit proto-feminist. I love how it looks at Jane Eyre's kind of unusual social position, how it looks at class and gender. I love Mr Rochester as a character even when I am in 
infuriated with him. I think he is so well drawn. And I just absolutely, absolutely love Jane Eyre. And also it's such a comfort read for me because I read it for the first time when I was so young and because I've read it so many times. I reread it earlier this year and for the first time in a couple of years and I just absolutely adored it. It's just such, such a wonderful read. Talking of the Brontes, at number six I have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, another book I absolutely adore. Wuthering Heights is a fantastic book which tells the story of two families, the Earnshaws and the Lintons, and what happens when a young boy called Heathcliff comes into the midst of these families and kind of disturbs everything, and everything goes really crazy. Wuthering Heights is one of those books that I absolutely love, but I also completely understand why people hate it. It is a weird, crazy book with a really weird, intricate narrative structure where most of the time when you're hearing a story, you're hearing about it through like three layers of narrative unreliability. All the characters, with the possible exception of Hareton, who I love, um, are pretty much horrible, horrible, despicable people. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of like really weird things going on. There's a lot of crazy doubling, which I absolutely love and I think is fantastic. It means that a lot of characters have the same name it is a bizarre, bizarre book, but I also think it is a complete masterpiece and I also love it so much. I've reread it so many times, I have studied it multiple times at school and university, and I just, every time I read Wuthering Heights, I find something new to think about, and I just love it so, so much. At number five, we have Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is another fantastic Victorian book, which I adore so much. This tells the story of Molly Gibson, um, who lives with her father, the doctor, in a small town. Her father has been a widower for a long time but one day he decides that he thinks his daughter needs a more maternal influence in his life and he decides to remarry um, and so into Molly's life come a stepmother and a stepsister and everything kind of goes on from there. It's about Molly's relationship with her stepmother and her stepsister and her father but also with a family who live nearby called the Hamleys um, and it's a coming of age story and a love story and a wonderful story about kind of small town 19th century England and I just love it for so many reasons. I love every single character in Wives and Daughters. Wives and Daughters in fact contains the character who I would say is not necessarily my favourite character in all of literature but the character I think is the best drawn in all of literature who is Squire Hamley who just feels so so real like all of Gaskell's characters do but Squire Hamley especially just feels completely and utterly real. I love the way this book looks at unrequited love, um, I love the way it looks at kind of gossip and reputation um, especially for young women at this point in time. I love the way it looks at what it means to live in a small town um, and all the kind of wonderful things and stressful things that come with that um, and I love the characters in this book um, and the relationship between them so much. It is just an absolute, absolute joy to read and I highly, highly recommend it. I cannot recommend it enough. One thing just to say about Wives and Daughters is that it is technically unfinished but like literally Gaskell had like two chapters left to write and it's very clear what's happening at the end so it's not unsatisfying at all and um, I highly, highly recommend it. At number four I have Dombey and Son, another Charles Dickens novel and one of my favourite books of all time. Dombey and Son is a fantastic, fantastic Victorian book that is kind of all about gender in many ways. The book is called Dombey and Son but it is not about Mr Dombey and it is not about Mr Dombey's son, it is in fact about Mr Dombey's daughter um, and Mr Dombey, her father, has this business Dombey and Son which means the world to him and that means that his son means the world to him because all he wants is his business to continue and his son to take over from him so he has no time for his daughter at all. He views girls as entirely insignificant. So this book is about Florence Dombey, her father's neglect of her, her relationship with her brother and her relationship with various other characters as things change throughout the book. There is so much that I love about Dombey and Son. I think the way it looks at gender and the way this book is kind of set up is this kind of battle between Mr Dombey's hyper-Victorian masculinity and um, Florence's kind of Victorian femininity is fascinating. I also think the villain of this book is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I think the minor characters are wonderful, like Susan, Mr Toots, Captain Cuttle. I haven't even mentioned Edith, who is like one of my absolute favourite Dickens characters. I also think the way this book looks at grief and family um, is fantastic and there's just, there's just so much to love in Dombey and Son. I just, I love it. I love it so, so, so much. And now we're down to my top three. My top top three favourite classics, which let's be honest are my top three favourite books of all time. At number three we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I love. This I think is probably the book I've read the most times, though Wuthering Heights might be battling it for this position. I've read this at least ten times. If you don't know, Pride and Prejudice tells the story of um, the Bennet family, the parents and their five daughters. Mr Bennet's estate is entailed um, on the male line, which, which means that after his death his daughters will be left with nothing, which means that his wife is very 
keen to make sure at least one of them makes a good marriage in order to support the rest of the sisters. And the book chiefly follows Elizabeth and Jane, the two elder sisters, um, and their romantic relationships, as well as their relationships with their family and the society around them. It is a early 19th century novel which looks at regency class and society and gender in the most fascinating way and I just I just love Pride and Prejudice for so many reasons. I partly love Pride and Prejudice because I think it is one of the best love stories ever written but I also think that it explores many many fascinating themes and has some brilliant brilliant characterization in it and also it makes me laugh so much and it makes me happy and just every time I read Pride and Prejudice it fills me with such delight that I just think it will always be one of my favorite books of all time nothing will ever take away from the sheer joy that reading Pride and Prejudice brings me. I love it so 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 much. At number two I have North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, another book that always brings me masses and masses of joy. North and South tells the story of a young woman, Margaret Hale, who has grown up in the south of England um, but after her father decides he can no longer be a clergyman they move to the northern town of Milton Northern which is a thinly veiled fictional version of Manchester and in this bustling northern mill town Margaret Margaret encounters a very new world. She befriends several factory workers and she also meets um, the factory owner, Mr Thornton, who may or may not be a little bit in love with Margaret, even though she is determined that she really, really is not in love with him. And everything goes on from there. It has a little bit of a Pride and Prejudice love story going through it, though in my opinion possibly even better. Like I love the love story in North and South so, so, so much. But also it is a book about social change and industrialization and class and the divisions between different parts of England. It's a book about industry and how society is changing in the 19th century and it's just got so much fascinating social criticism in it um, which I just absolutely love. I highly, highly recommend North and South. It is one of the best books in the world and I just, I just love it. I just love it so, so, so much. Right, we're on to number one, my favourite book of all time. No surprise, I talk about this all the time. But my favourite book of all time is Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. You can even tell by the, the state of my copy um, that it is my favourite book of all time. It's been read many, many times. I love Our Mutual Friend hugely. It is my favourite book by my favourite author and I just, I just love it so much. This tells a story of various characters who are all connected um, by two things, partly by the River Thames and partly by this fortune that has been made in rubbish, that has been made in dust. Um, and this fortune was passed down from a man called Old Mr Harmon to Young Mr Harmon, but Young Mr Harmon is found drowned in the River Thames. So the book follows the fortune that was supposed to go to John Harmon and what ends up happening with that money and who it affects and everyone who is kind of touched by this. But it follows so many wonderful, wonderful characters. I love the characterization in Our Mutual Friends so much. Bella Wilfer, Lizzie Hexham, Jenny Wren, Bradley Headstone, like so many fantastically drawn, fascinating characters that I just love. I love how this book has like the perfect blend for me of humour and sorrow. Like there are moments which are so emotional and which make me cry, which I love, but there are also moments that are absolutely hilarious. I love how it includes some of Charles Dickens's most fully developed and most fascinating female characters. I love how it looks at class and gender and marriage and money um, and how all these things kind of mix up together. I love how it looks at the gulf between money and respectability. I love how it looks at the kind of complicated social issues in the Victorian period and I love how it's all kind of brought together by the River Thames and how it has this wonderful atmosphere throughout it. There are so many things that I love about Our Mutual Friend and we're not going to go into them all here because this video has probably been long enough already but suffice to say it is my favourite novel of all time and I love it massively. So that is it. That is a whistle stop tour of my 20 favourite classics. Please do let me know down in the comments what your favourite classics are um, and otherwise I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back tomorrow with another bookish video. Bye.